Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. One of the questions I get asked a lot about what happens in this chest, abdominal area for penetrating trauma. Like, someone gets a gunshot wound to the chest, what am I supposed to do? Do I wound pack it? Do I put a chest seal? Do I cover it up? What am I supposed to do? Even the stomach, you know, do I try to wound pack the stomach or what happens? So, it's one of the questions I want to answer in this video. So, when you're wound packing, you're actually using the muscle cavity that's been created by the penetrating trauma to fill the void. So you have an artery here that's been severed, squirting bright red blood out of the wound. Then you take your gauze and that's what you're packing into the wound, into that little cavity that's been created. So you're getting it down to the source, you're packing east, north, south, west, getting all those little crevices filled up and you're using the muscle cavity hole there to wound pack. So it works really good in the muscular areas, legs, arms, shoulders, groin, place where there's a lot of muscle Wound packing is a fantastic fantastic option, but in the chest cavity, abdominal cavity, not so much. So let's start with the abdominal area here. Warning, I'm going to put a graphic up right here to cover this, so if you don't want to see anything really graphic, really nasty, you probably want to fast forward or just skip to another video. But So this is what happens in the abdominal area. The large intestines, the small intestines are all right there, and they ultimately end just kind of spilling out. And I know that looks really gross. But there's not a lot of vascular going on at the surface there. Yes, you do have some large veins and vessels going uh, down in through the abdominal area to feed the legs. But ultimately, typically there's not a lot of bleeding, especially on slashes, things like that. The intestines just kind of come out because they're so compact in there, they just kind of come out. Now, it's my understanding that when they do come out, they die very quickly. So a lot of times what happens in surgery is they just cut out the part that's come out and they reattach it, things like that. So. Uh, the best thing to do for this abdominal area here is just to cover it with a moist dressing. Just cover it with a dr dressing and try to keep it as clean as possible. And because of this, the intestines are down in the abdominal area, this is hollow organs, okay? It means they're filled with air. But, you know, there's food and stuff like that, so uh, bear with me. But they're not filled with blood. So they're considered a hollow organ. So they're really smushy. So if you went to try to put wound pack galls down in there, you're gonna need a lot of galls, like a case of combat galls. That gets expensive very quickly. So they just kind of move around and squish around. You can stick your whole hand down in there and just kind of move things around and that's not very effective. So this is kind of a rough estimate here of what the chest looks like when we open it up. You have a lung right here. The right lung is typically larger than the left lung because the heart is sitting right in here. So it's kind of have to move out of the way a little bit. You've got a trachea and esophagus coming down diaphragm running right here, liver, spleen, and intestines down below. So the lungs are filled with little air pockets, so they are really squishy. So if you had a penetrating trauma here that you're trying to wound pack, you're just pushing against air. There's nothing for the combat galls to sit against to put pressure against. There's actually a documented case where a doctor uh, performed um, a procedure in the 70s where he was, I believe he was doing surgery, his patient went into cardiac arrest, went to V-fib, so the heart was sitting here quivering. He reached his hands into the guy's chest through the rib cage and started squeezing his heart because he was in cardiac arrest and the heart wasn't pumping. So he started doing that manually with his hand. So you can move all this stuff out of the way. These are filled with air, okay? There is some blood that's obviously going in through there, but there are a lot of air is the problem. You, the diaphragm, liver, spleen, they're very vascular, they bleed. But there again, they're squishy, so you start pushing on them, they just move out of the way. So ultimately, I say all of that to say this, is the best thing you can do for penetrating trauma to the chest, abdominal area, is to seal it up, okay? Vented chest seals are the way to go now. If you have the non-vented, that's okay. But right now, the vented chest seals are the way to go. This allows pressure build up that is building up to be released through the vents. Also, that be air or blood coming up through here, it allows it to vent out. So, typically we do try to uh, put a, an occlusive dressing, a, a, some kind of dressing like this, on the neck area, unless it's just profusely bleeding, then you gotta try to hold pressure. You wouldn't wanna hold pressure on both sides, but you know, you gotta control the bleeding. That comes first before airway and breathing. So, trauma, penetrating trauma, I mean, there's a hole in the chest front or back because the lungs are on the back side as well put a chest seal on it and seal it up this patient needs trauma surgery so i hope this video helps you never know when you'll be the first responder in the right gear and the right training
Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. One of the questions that hap well, happens all the time. Can't talk. All right, so this is kind of a rough joint. Joint. Wish I had a joint. Just kidding. Not really. <laughs> 